I made a career change about six years ago, going from an account manager making a pretty low wage to a software engineer, and it changed my finances and it changed my life forever. I didn't have a degree and I didn't have any experience. I'm gonna tell you how I did it. So first, I think it's important to understand just my mindset in general about careers and school. So you know, I grew up, I was always told, you know, if you go to school, if you get a good degree, you'll walk out with a good job. Maybe back in the day that was probably accurate, but you all know now, it is not accurate. You can go to school, you can get as many degrees as you want, and you can still struggle to get a job. I graduated with a degree in marketing. My goal was to always be in advertising. You know, I'm thinking about commercials, filming, things like that. It didn't work out that way. I ended up with a job, a management trainee for a pest control company. When I graduated, it was one of the worst economies in a very long time. So it was difficult to find a good job. So I had to take something to pay the bills. Obviously, that was not the path that I wanted to go down. Long story short, I didn't last long at that job. Once I got out of that job, I ended up with an account management job. It wasn't terrible. You know, I had good coworkers, but the money just wasn't there. And I knew that long term, I wasn't going to be able to support myself or family if I was to stay there. So I got introduced in, and I was told by one of my friends that I didn't need a degree necessarily to get a job in tech. And that completely opened my eyes to this field. Now I'll explain how I actually got into the field. I learned the difference between front-end languages and back-end languages. Naturally, I geared towards front-end languages because it was easy to test and it was easier for me to see what I was doing. If I was to make any changes in the code right there in front of me, I can see the outcome of that change. Compared to the back-end languages where you might have to set up a database and you might have to set up some other things just to get things going. It was immediate feedback and that's why I geared towards JavaScript. So I gave myself a three month span. I told myself that if I was to keep studying for three months at least and I still enjoyed it, then I was gonna try to make this my career. I was studying during my lunch break, during my current job. I was studying after work. I was studying on the weekends, trying to build projects signing up for code camps, signing up for paid resources, signing up for free resources. I became obsessed with trying to learn this because I saw what the outcome could be if I was to get another job. So my favorite resources is actually Free Code Camp and Code Academy. Code Academy showed me just the basics of how to do any kind of scripting or coding at all. They gave me a good base to even just get started on what all of this meant. So as you may know or may not know, when you sign up for a lot of these programs, you start to build projects as a way to learn the language. In the meantime, I built my own website. I paid for my own hosting. It was cheap hosting, but I paid for it and I uploaded all of my projects to the website, even if it was something that was done through a tutorial or something that I was kind of building on my own. And the reason I did this was because I was building my own resume. I didn't have a resume in tech, so a portfolio was the only thing that I would be able to show potential employers. Another thing to mention, if you do build your portfolio and you do have it on your website, try to put some projects on there that you didn't necessarily build through a tutorial. And the reason I say that is because obviously these websites are pretty popular. So if you were to get an interview and you discuss your portfolio and the things that you built. That countdown timer and that random quote generator, I'm pretty sure the recruiter has seen that a million times. So you wanna put something that you've done, even if it's ugly, even if you're still working on it and it's not 100% functional, that's fine and it's not important. And I'll tell you why. When you do start to apply for jobs and you do start to interview, employers know that you don't have experience. If they call you, they wanna see what you're about. They can see your resume, they can see the portfolio Please add your portfolio link to your resume, but they know that you don't have experience. So if you have enough projects on your website, it shows to the employer that you're a self-starter, you're a self-learner, and you don't give up. These are always gonna be way more important than what you can know technically. Anytime I would speak with somebody, they were interested in me. Because the technical side, you can always learn that. You can do more training, you can have a mentor, you can always learn the technical side. But your personality, how hard you work, or how you don't give up, or how you're a self-starter and you know where to look for resources to learn different things, you can't teach that to people. And that's what they're more interested in. So that's why I mentioned it's not necessarily important if you have some projects that might not be the prettiest, or they might not even function the best, but it's important to see that you are a self-starter and you're trying to do your best to get into this field. So the turning point for me, I told myself that after a year, I would start applying. But I got impatient when it got to around nine months of time. I wanted to see what it was like to try to get a tech job for the first time. So I started applying to every front end junior level position that I could see. I didn't care who it was with because that wasn't important. That first job, 
is the most important job because it'll get you into the field, you'll have something on your resume, and then you can build from there. Getting the first job is going to be difficult because you don't have any experience. I started applying. So many interviews that I went on that I completely bombed. I mean, I did terrible on these interviews. I had no idea about how to make my code more efficient. Object-oriented programming. I knew what it was from a description and a dictionary standpoint, but not how to actually implement it. But these were the things that I was learning on the actual interview. Interviews. Anytime I would leave an interview, I would always keep in mind the questions that they asked me that I didn't know the answer to. As soon as I got home, I would look up these answers, learn what it was, and the next time I go on these interviews, I was confident and I could answer the questions. So look at these interviews not as a way to actually get the job when you first start applying, but as a way to learn what you don't know. So once I actually got on the interview, since I didn't have any experience to speak of, I expressed my personality and I expressed how much I love to be in the field and how bad I wanted to get my first job. I interviewing for three months straight that I couldn't get anything, I couldn't get an offer. And then I finally found somebody that gave me an offer for a junior level position. I had no experience, but it worked out. And that was over six years ago, to the point now to where I've advanced, I've changed my career path a bit now to not necessarily just be focused on front end, but I'm still an engineer. And how it changed my life, I can't even describe. The most obvious thing is income. I went from a low paying job to a very high income career. It also changed the thing that I like to call leverage. Normally, when I would look for jobs before I got into the tech field, I kind of just had to accept whatever was available to me. But once you get into the tech field, it's always in very high demand, especially if you have a specific skill set. So now I was able to be in positions to where I could choose jobs that I wanted to be in. I could be more selective about the companies that I would accept an offer from. Compared to before, I'm just like, give me a job, I don't care. I, I'll clean the floors, I don't care. So now, I can be more selective and I have companies actually seeking me. So everything just completely flipped as far as just being more flexible as far as the companies that I choose, having a better just overall experience working, a better income, better salary, and a legit career. You know, this is a career that you can grow into and you can expand as far as you want to take it. If you want to just stay in the mid-level, you can do it if you want. If you want to just get to a senior level and just stay there, that's also your choice. Some people like to get to an architectural level and they like to lead a team or be a manager. It's all within your hands. It just kind of depends on how you want to take your career. So to compare that to a point to where I didn't have much money, I didn't have any hope, I didn't have a career, and I was thinking about going back to school for a master's degree in accounting, and I'm so glad I didn't do that, uh, to now seeing how things are changing that career and being persistent was one of the best things that I've ever done. It's not easy, but it is possible. Plenty of people have done it and more people will do it. But just stay focused, don't give up, keep pushing hard and keep remembering that everything is a learning experience. So that's what I have for you today. If you're thinking about getting into the tech field, if you're thinking about you know, becoming a software engineer or a developer with no experience, with no degree, don't let it scare you. You can do it.